The Sony NEX6 was released in 2013 and was essentially Sony's final NEX series camera before the Sony A6000 was released, which sent us into a wave of A6000 cameras, which are still in production even today. It's an interesting NEX series camera because it takes a lot of the good from the camera's position both above and below it in Sony's NEX line to create what I think is one of the best budget mirrorless camera options even in 2020. All right, let's just get going talking about the good things about the NEX6. And there are a lot, starting with the amazing viewfinder that this camera inherits from its big brother, the Sony NEX7. These are the two cameras in the Sony NEX line that feature a viewfinder. And this viewfinder is actually pretty awesome. It's very high resolution with a lot of great brightness to it and allows you the ability to take photos and videos in brighter environments. I just love being able to look through this viewfinder and get better exposure by not having to rely on the back LCD monitor in brighter environments where the sun might be hitting that monitor, which isn't too bright to begin with. It's an okay monitor, but that viewfinder allows you to not have to worry about a bright sunny day, that light hitting the back of your camera screen. The Sony NEX6 features the same sensor that the Sony NEX5R has, which is my other favorite Sony NEX series camera. And both of those cameras feature a sensor that has pixels devoted to phase detection, which provides this like hybrid autofocus experience that's elevated from the rest of the Sony NEX series cameras. You do get 16.1 megapixels, which is a little bit lower than the 24.3 that the NEX7 has. And this camera was actually released after the Sony NEX7. So I was hoping that the NEX6 would feature that same 24.3 megapixel sensor, but it does not. It features uh, the Sony NEX5R's camera sensor, which to be honest, is a really great sensor. I get great image quality, great video quality out of this guy and the NEX5R. So those are sporting the same sensor, which I have been very pleased at seeing. This older camera technology still holds up really well, even in 2023 with this sensor performance. You get quality 1080p video at 60p, which is awesome. I think that's great for most people. 60 frames a second at 1080p is totally fine, even in 2023. I know the world is moving to 4K, but most people don't need 4K right now, okay? I just now shifted my workflow to 4K workflow because a lot of computers can't handle a 4K video workflow, okay? So the NEX6 is a really user-friendly codec for most computers. So if you have a cheaper, older computer that you're trying to edit videos on, 1080p, is totally a fine resolution for you to start out on. The autofocus performance is pretty solid on this camera. It features 99 phase detect autofocus points, um, which just provides a better autofocus experience than some of the other cameras in the NEX line, especially underneath the NEX 5R, so 5N, 5, 3N, etc. Those lower tier cameras have a little bit worse autofocus than the NEX 6 does. I need to pause for a second and talk about the build quality. For whatever reason, this camera just looks so good and is one of my favorite body styles. It just feels different. I don't know what they built this camera with, but it does not feel nearly as plasticky as the NEX7 does or even the A6000 or the 5R. All of those feel super cheaply made, but this camera just feels really rugged. Like I could just pound a nail into a table with this guy or something. This thing is awesome. I love the build quality of the NEX6. So I'm very proud of what Sony did with this camera as far as build quality is concerned. I do like that you get a mode dial on top of the NEX6 to switch between different camera modes. But the truth of the matter is, uh, while it is kind of cool and looks cool, I always keep the camera in manual mode anyways. So it's not a huge uh, benefit to me because I always leave it in, in manual no matter what. So I'm not really changing that camera mode. It looks really cool, but in practice, it doesn't really benefit me having a dedicated mode dial. And none of the NEX cameras have that either. You have to go into the menu system to change that mode dial um, or the, the type of mode that you're shooting in. But again, if you shoot in manual, which I hope you do, and I'm gonna put out videos and courses in on my YouTube channel about how to shoot in manual exposure and how to just uh, learn these photography principles. Once you learn that, you never change your camera mode because it's always in manual to begin with. So it is cool, but not a huge uh, deal breaker if it didn't have that at all. You do get a function button at the front of the camera right by the shutter button, which actually allows you to map about 15 different functions to this dedicated button up front. But you can only have about five or six 
available to you at any given time, but it's nice that it gives you the option to map specific buttons to this front function button to begin with. This is also the only Sony NEX camera that features a regular hot shoe. So you can mount regular hot shoe accessories to the top of this camera. Now it doesn't feature a microphone input, which is really unfortunate, uh, but it does feature a regular hot shoe. So you could mount a microphone that doesn't need to be plugged into the camera or other accessories like lights, and other things that take hot shoe adapters, um, you can mount that in the hot shoe port. It's also the first camera that shipped the Sony 16 to 50 power zoom lens with the body. All the rest of them had, I think, the 18 to 55 kit lens, but we saw the introduction of the 16 to 50 power zoom with the NEX 6. And then um, a lot of the A6000 cameras shipped with that 16 to 55 power zoom lens as well. Okay, I know that was a long list of positives, but I just really liked using this camera. I think there's a lot going for it, but let's shift our attention to a couple of cons. But before we do that, be sure to leave a like on this video, comment down below if you're enjoying these types of camera reviews and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much guys. Okay, now the cons. The first would be, it's just, it's the older autofocus system in general and autofocus is not super great in low light situations, especially. Um, I had some problems uh, just trying to hunt for focus in a variety of situations, especially in lower light environments. So autofocus, again, it's not gonna be the worst out there. It's pretty solid in most situations, especially well lit environments outdoors. But if you get inside and you have lower light and you're shooting at higher ISO values, focus tends to be a little bit tougher to acquire. With the menu and operating system, again, you get the old, old NEX series menu style system. So it really feels like you're getting more of a professional, entry level professional mirrorless camera as far as body and ergonomics are concerned. But the technology behind the body is still just kind of stuck in the past. It's stuck in the early 2010s, which just can be a little bit frustrating when you're trying to um, get used to shooting on these newer camera systems. This older camera tech is just, it's pretty outdated and not my favorite to use. Okay, my overall recommendation, truthfully, as I look at Sony's line, I'm gonna do a review where I kind of talk about all of the Sony NEX series cameras, okay? And spoiler alert, this camera is gonna rank pretty high on that list. I think this is a great option, even in 2023. If you're on a budget, if you're on, if you have about 200-ish dollars to spend on a camera and a lens, you can pretty easily find the NEX6 online. I got mine for $177 and it came with the kit lens, okay? It's in great condition. I'm gonna keep this camera for many, many years and it's gonna be a fun run and gun style, just outside with my family, wanting to take photos having fun, not worrying about if the camera's gonna drop or whatever. It's a cheaper camera, a cheap piece of equipment, but still gets great results. I really recommend to anyone, if you're looking for a budget option, the NEX6 is a great way to enter into more of a professional style of camera where you have autofocus lock and you have ISO buttons and shutter speed dials and manual control, right? You can practice all of that with an NEX6 or an NEX5R and be able to polish your skills and grow as a filmmaker and grow as a photographer. And you can always upgrade your bodies later, okay? This is a great beginner option for most people. Thank you guys so much for taking time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We have a ton more videos on this channel about NEX series cameras and we have more reviews about the Sony NEX line coming very soon. So thank you so much, guys. Much love.